Hey guys, it's me, and I'm back with a new episode of my Best Vintage Life podcast. It is our first episode of the year and our first video podcast. I'm taking a stab at it. I don't know if it'll actually work or not, but you don't know if you don't try, and I thought it could add an interesting new element to the show. So welcome to our first video podcast. Now, as many of you know, I bought a new home. Well, not a new home, but I bought a vintage home late last year in December. Um, So I am in the process of remodeling that home, and I am still in my current home, Um, both vintage homes. My current home was built in 1951, and the house that I'll be moving into was built in 1971. So there's a 20-year age difference there and a world of difference really in the design and the um the guts of the house so before we begin i just wanted to do our dates email us at admin admin at my best vintage life podcast.com i ask that if you have any order wholesale order inquiries please send them to that email don't send them to me via dm on instagram I don't like to conduct business over social media. It's just the way I am. And then um, on social media, you can find us at My Best Vintage Life Podcast and at My Best Vintage Life Academy. I did away with the Facebook page. I didn't really even have that many likes on either page. It just didn't seem like people were that into it. Everyone's on Instagram. So Podcast and Academy Facebook pages have been deleted or they should be deleted. I don't know. I feel like there's like a grace period where you can go and reactivate them. So they aren't going to be around too much longer. So if you're following, if that's the only way you're following, you know, you can you can create an Instagram without actually participating in Instagram. You can just follow people and not actively post. So that's an option for you. We all are. We also are on uh, Pinterest through the Academy at My Best Vintage Life Podcast on Pinterest. What else? What else? <laughs> um, websites for the podcast and the Academy are listed there: My Best Vintage Life Podcast dot com and My Best Vintage Life Academy dot com. And our Google Voice number is five five nine three six five six seven four three. Feel free to call in with any questions you may have, comments, concerns. Even if you just want to say hi, it rings my phone. Um, That's not my actual phone number. It's my Google Voice number. But I would love to hear from you. No one ever calls, so it would be nice to get a call for once. And then if you um, are loving the podcast, if, you know, I've helped you in some way, shape, or form, or I have helped you recently. I know I've had a lot of people reach out to me with questions that I've been trying to take the time to get back to. Please consider becoming a patron of the podcast and you can do so through my new podcasting hosting site which is podbean uh, it's pot patron.podbean.com slash my best vintage life podcast there are three tiers i was originally going to do this through the patreon site but since the hosting site sol- solved that issue for me they have their own i rather just keep it on one site uh, there's a two dollar general support option you pay two dollars a month twenty four dollars a year and that's just to provide the podcast with general support totally affordable there's a five dollar tier um, that'll get you either a personal or a business shout out on the show which is fun i can say whatever you want me to say if you want me to uh, promote your business or if you have some sort of venture i'd love to do that for you Um, You're also providing general support with that donation, and you also will be added to a close friends group on Instagram to get some more behind-the-scenes stuff than the general account followers will get. So all great bonuses there. And then I'm also doing a $20 monthly subscription fee to the um, patron. If you are looking for some mentorship or you have just an abundance of vintage questions and you would like to do one-on-one time with me, feel free to um, set up that. It will be a $20 a month reoccurring fee. And once a month, you and I would have a 30 minute um, face to face call where we can do mentorship. It's really great for business owners. Um, I've done it with a few people. And it works out just really well, um, because it's one on one time. And it's not over DMs. It's not over email or text or whatever. It's face to face. And I feel like it's just fun getting to know you better. And you can cancel any of these at any time. So whether you have the $2 tier, the $5 tier, or the $20 tier, 
if you don't have the money or you're not feeling like you're getting anything out of the show, which would make me sad, but you know, to each their own, everybody has different opinions, or you don't need the mentorship anymore, you can cancel these at any time. So they're just monthly reoccurring fees really to support the podcast. When I switched over to Podbean, um, I paid a yearly fee because it was just a lot cheaper and I ended up spending close to uh, $350. So right now I'm trying to make some of that money back. Um, I have a $60 monthly goal. So whether you do, you can do like a one-time donation, I think, um, or you can just, you know, do the reoccurring subscription. It would just be nice because between the podcast website and the hosting fees, it's working out to be about $60 a month, even though I paid one up front. So sorry, I don't mean, mean to make this all about money, but I refuse to do ads. I really don't ever want it to come to that. I'd rather, you know, be supported by people who actually enjoy the show. And, you know, that's, that's just what I'm asking for right now. So if you could please support us in that way, that would be awesome. I'd love to, you know, just have some money to put towards that, that upfront chunk of change I spent on the hosting fees. Um, and don't forget to rate and review the podcast. A lot of you have already done so. I really, really appreciate that. That is um, a way you can support the podcast in a non-monetary sense. You can do so on the Apple Podcast app or through Podchaser. Podchaser supports all platforms, so you don't have to have an iPhone to review on there. And it's a great website to discover new podcasts or catalog the podcasts that you like. Other than my best vintage life, obviously. Okay, enough with the deets. Oh, wait, I forgot. Actually, I didn't put this on the slide, but um, we did start a YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search my Best Vintage Life podcast and Academy, making it a combined channel, um, subscribe there because that's going to be a great little place for me to do um, video bits and bobs for you guys. Sometimes it just gets hard on Instagram um, stories to do long videos. And I'm not really, I don't like IGTV that much. I find it to be very slow and Instagram Live's okay, but I feel like it, it's technologically not the best thing either. I feel like people don't get notified. The connection, even though we have like better internet now, can be wishy-washy with the app. So I feel like YouTube is just really, it's king when it comes to, or rather queen, or whatever, um, when it comes to video content. So YouTube, um, check that out and subscribe. So in December, I bought a new home. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is I wasn't even necessarily planning on buying a new home. It's just the neighborhood where I lived was getting, live, still live, it's getting really um, unsafe. I had someone shoot a gun in front of my house. I had someone cut the camera out of my ring floodlight camera, like drove up on a bike, looked into the camera as they did it. Um, just... You know, um, I'm sure you hear a lot of pe a lot of things on the news about California, and I don't want to get into like politics or social issues. Um, that's really not, you know, the core of this podcast. And if that is the core of other podcasts or part of it, that's fine. Um, I don't. I just try to keep things positive. But um, California is just it's changed a lot since I've moved here, and I'm sure it's changed a lot since. I don't know, maybe since Art's been here, I know he says it has. Um, and it's just, in my opinion, like if I could sum it up in one sentence, it's becoming a more and more unpredictable and unsafe place as time goes on. And obviously that's subjective to where you live. Fresno hasn't been a very safe city for a long time and it's just getting worse. So I needed to move to a neighborhood where I feel safe. And, you know, I had a conversation with someone who said, you know, like, if you don't feel safe in your home, that's a colossal issue as a woman, you know, and um, I agree. And I hopefully now will feel much safer. I personally don't feel like most of Fresno is safe. There's always pockets everywhere, even in, you know, people, there's like a lot of snobby, rich people, ultra privileged people that, you know, they're like, oh, well, I live in X neighborhood, so it won't happen here. But like, it's happening everywhere. Just crime is up and um, got to keep your guard up. But I won't have to do that as much in this neighborhood. And that is so refreshing. I'm very thankful to be able to and grateful to be able to move. And I will miss my home. I shed a lot of tears over leaving my 
my house because it's been a it's been a rock for me um but it's time it's time to move on and i know the new home will become that for me over time it's just a matter of time really so this is my new house uh it was built in 1971 and it has a lot of original character and this is the second vintage home that i've purchased since moving to california so the house is green. Um, I actually just had all the gutters replaced yesterday. So the door is red and the gutters were red and some of the, the garage trim, you can see some red there and some, I think wrought iron on the front porch is red. So I just, I was just like, this is a weird color combination. I love the green on the house. I don't like the red. So at least now the gutters are white. They are uh, matching the window frames little baby steps but the gutters were really jacked up and leaking so as much as I like hate dumping money into like the guts of the house like it has to be done um, because you don't want wood rot which is common in old houses uh, this is the garage as you can see there is cat and like geranium style wallpaper trim <laughs> don't ask me um, this that room wasn't even used as a garage. It was used as like a playroom and a storage room. So it is getting converted back to a garage. But most of the rooms in the house had pink carpeting, which has since been ripped up. The garage will be the last one to uh, to have the carpet ripped up. It's bizarre, but honestly, this is an amazing. This is from my personal Instagram, um, where I'm posting most of the content with my home renovation. But as you can see, it's a, a bright and cheery garage, but I do have a lot of do's and don'ts for you um, for this process, and I thought they'd be useful to share. Obviously, my, my podcast isn't a home-focused podcast or a decor-focused podcast, but every now and then it's fun to talk about something else. So for my first do, be realistic about your budget. You will most likely spend anywhere from five to $20,000 on renovations that's where I live. It's going to change no matter where you are. It's going to change. Um, but I'm just telling you based on where I live, that's about average. Um, and if you don't want to spend money on projects and reno, don't buy an old house, buy a new house and you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Although do be aware, a lot of the newer homes are being made very cheaply. It's like whatever's on sale at Lowe's or Home Depot that week. That's the flooring they're putting in. That's the plumbing they're putting in. So be aware of that. Sometimes the guts aren't the best. Do look for a home where you can maintain some or most of the original vibe. Um, in my opinion, buying an old house, gutting the place, it just defeats the purpose of buying an older home. It's nice if you can keep like 50-50 or like 75-25, you know what I mean? Like don't just gut the place. If you're going to do that, just, just buy a new house. There's no point. Um, do have a real estate agent that gets you. Okay, my agent, Caitlin, she knew what I wanted. I sent her ideas. She knew I didn't want, you know, cookie cutter. A lot of agents are used to selling modern cookie cutter homes. Um, make them aware. If you want an older house, make them aware that is not what you want. You will save so much time. And like if you're on a real estate app, you can filter homes out by era, you know, by year. So for me, when I was looking, I did like, I think 1900. I don't even think there are houses here that old, but 1900 through 1980, I think was my limit, maybe 85. Not really into 80s houses, but just in case. Um, that was my filter you know, and it just like cleans up. I used Redfin. That's my app of choice for real estate um, in the US. I don't know about in other countries, but I'm not as much into Zillow. But anyways, it just like it, it clears up the map, you know what I mean? And you don't have all the stuff. If you're not into modern houses, get rid of it and, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Do be prepared to get a home inspection report that is less than perfect. Old homes can be sources of mold, asbestos, lead paint, termites, pests, fascia damage, old wiring, poor insulation, etc. Listen, don't be disheartened when the home inspection report comes back and it's a little on the thick side. It's going to be, usually it's a lot of little things or maybe one or two really big things. Hopefully not a combination of both, but just be aware that unless you're like, unless it was a quick turnaround, like someone bought it and did some work and then listed it. Um, but usually when people flip houses like that, they're gutting the inside and it looks awful. So just be prepared for a not so great home inspection report. 
Um, do know that remodeling a home during the pandemic is a nightmare. It really has been. Um, you know, like I said, I know I'm lucky to be in the position that I'm in, but it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been stressless. It's been very stressful. Um, everyone is buying everything, uh, which isn't really what I thought was going on. Um, I ordered my refrigerator refrigerator from a local business because I wanted to support a local uh, appliance business. And the woman was I thought every I was like, maybe it's because everything's made overseas and shipping and the vaccine being shipped X, Y and Z. She's like, no, people are just um, they're they're bored at home and they're spending money. I'm like, OK, that's not really what I'm seeing being portrayed in the media, but okay, I, I guess. <laughs> That's just not really what I thought was going on. If anything, I thought people wouldn't be spending money. But who knows, you know, I other people's finances are none of my business. I was just kind of shocked at that response. Um, so yeah, my refrigerator, I ordered it in December. It won't be here until almost March. So just be prepared. Like, I don't know how long all of this is going to be going on for just be prepared. As long as people are working from home, I think they're just like things are breaking quicker, kids are breaking things, things are getting used more, or people are just bored and like, hey, I hate my refrigerator, let's get a new one. Things that used to be more out of sight, out of mind, are more in people's line of sight now. Uh, do research the era of your home and see what colors and textures were popular at that time. Um, you know, I'm going for um, more of a colorful Danish. I hope I, I, mean, I know it's Hugh, 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 Hugo. No, Hugo. No. Oh, my friend Allison just pronounced this the other day, and I looked up how to pronounce it um, right before I did the show. And then I had therapy for an hour, and I forgot. I apologize for not being able to say that word correctly, but you know what I mean. Comfortable, cozy, warm, inviting. I'm not into like stark white Scandinavian design. That's just not my thing. It has a very, I don't know. I just don't, I don't like clinical feel. And I know for a lot of people, they want that simplified um, design. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just not for me. I like color in my home. I like warmth. And uh, I have a lot of really cool inspirational images saved on my personal Pinterest account. So kind of keeping that vibe going. Okay. Do be thoughtful about other members of your family when purchasing an older home. So not all older houses are safe for kids, pets, the elderly, or people who are disabled. So keep that in mind. Like, you know, if your 80 year old mother lives with you, it might not be a good idea to buy a house with like a spiral staircase or something that isn't handicap accessible. Um, you know, keep those things in mind. You might not want your kids in a house that has a bunch of, you know, rooms. I mean, it really depends on where you live. I mean, I don't know if you guys follow cheap old houses, but you can buy some of these places, I mean, they're selling mansions, like 20 room mansions for nothing, depending on where you are. So I don't know if something like that would be great for a kid, you know, moving into like the Jumanji house <laughs> and pets too. I mean, I have seen your pets and luckily the houses in California for the most part are single story. Um, but something to keep in mind too, if you have a puppy or an older dog, do drive around the neighborhood and see if other homes have maintained their aesthetics. Um, it's, it's nice to have a cohesive look. So, you know, if you're in a neighborhood of seventies homes and like people have really started modernizing them, it might be, it might not be your thing. You might want to live in a neighborhood that feels like you're in a time capsule. I totally get that. And I think that that's fun into the don'ts. Okay. Don't buy a newer home if it is what you feel pressured um, to buy. So if like, I don't know, some of you might be in the position where your family members give you money to buy houses. Um, I'm not, obviously not in that position, but if you don't want a newer home, then try to like come up with a situation that makes everyone happy. So maybe you don't buy a super old house, you buy like a middle of the road house in terms of age, but just make sure it is your home and you're gonna be living there for a long time. So make sure you get what you want. Uh, don't buy an older home without having a reliable contractor on hand to help. Do your research. 
you know, ask around. Sometimes word of mouth is the best place to find people to help you with your home. I am having major issues with my contractor right now who is like family to me. He was the contractor to my old landlord and then he kind of just came with the house when I bought it from my landlord. I mean, he had been doing work there while I was renting and then I bought the house and I'm like, well, I'll just use him. Why? Like he lives a block away. Yeah, um, he's not cut out for big projects, and I learned that the hard way the last few weeks. Um, I had to bring a friend of mine on to get on his ass yesterday, and uh, it worked. It's it's working well. I gave him a deadline of February 22nd of when I wanted to move into the house. So m word of advice, like make sure if it's a contractor like a single person like they have some sort of um like contingency plan like oh if they need more help they know where to look or where to get it and that they're using like good decent people and not sketchy people that they're bringing on like my my contractor wanted to bring on some random guy that he barely knew and i was just i was like no i'm not okay with that um you know a lot of things can arise in terms of contractors whether they're doing paint plumbing i kind of use the word contractor as a collective whole just do your research and make sure it's someone that you want in your home <laughs> um, don't buy an older home if you are a really busy person who has no interest in remodeling and projects i am busy but i love remodeling not everyone is me <laughs> so if that sounds like a burden to you or something you don't want to take on don't do it just buy a newer house don't buy an older house um, don't decorate in a style that looks contrived. So like a mid-century modern home, or as I say, a mid-mod home, um, does not require all mid-mod furnishings. You know what I mean? Like kind of like with vintage, you mix eras and mix and match old with new. You should do that with your home as well. Otherwise, kind of just like how a vintage outfit can end up looking costumey, the same thing can happen with your home. Like you, you don't want to feel like, I mean, okay, like my house is 70s. I don't want to feel like when people walk in, I don't want them to think, okay, am I on a movie set? <laughs> is this that 70s show? No, it's not. Let's see. Um, let me go back one. Okay. Don't be afraid to schedule inspections that aren't obligatory pests love old homes so your home will probably have a termite inspection if you're in the u.s for sure but don't be afraid to hire a pest control company to come out and look at other things too rodents moths pantry moths clothing moths c carpet beetles oh my god i don't even want to think about what was lurking in in the new house um, and i really don't want to have pest control at the new house but i might have them come in and treat at one time um, just in case, but you just don't know. So don't feel, and, and by the way, like when the termite person comes, they're typically not looking for any other pests. So that's going to be on you. Don't be afraid to, I think sometimes those inspections are anywhere from like one to $300. Don't be afraid to invest and see if anything else is lurking in the house. Um, don't remodel while you're living in the home if possible. Now I know this is impossible for a lot of you but if you can it'll save you so much stress um you know you don't have to cover up your stuff worry about things paint getting on things dust getting on things um remodeling a home is really gross and it's just really it's ideal to not be in the house if you don't have to now sometimes you know you want to remodel one room after you've been in a house for 10 years whatever yes that is different but i'm talking about like if you're doing renovations to most of the home it's just ideal to not be in there which is why i did what i did and i kind of worked it out that i'm not paying a double mortgage until march um which is another reason why i want to get in there so keep that in mind like if you can afford to have rent at an apartment a condo whatever and also pay a mortgage um, I highly recommend waiting to move in until after renovations and keeping in mind that usually with a mortgage, um, you don't, you don't start paying right away. There is like a little bit of a, a lag time from when you close on your house to the first payment. So <laughs> I wanted to put more pictures of the home in, but a lot of what I had was video and that wouldn't work because I am recording a video. Uh, right now I'm recording my screen, but this is my kitchen. Um, that blue wall is going goodbye. And the ceiling fan, um, the cabinets are staying. 
the blue wall is actually going to be sanded down and sealed and then there's a wallpaper wall going there um, I got this really fun wallpaper it's like a pink background with oranges on it and uh, it's funny I have um, a newsletter subscription to Domino magazine so I get their emails and the other day they sent out an email and my wallpaper was the feature like in the email so I was super excited like I guess I'm on trend um, and that big empty space on the left is where the uh, the refrigerator will eventually go. But this is just, you know, one example of a small project that, you know, if you're not into projects, you probably wouldn't want to do. But I'm excited to have a wallpaper wall and, you know, update the ceiling fan. And we're also painting the kitchen as well, which wasn't initially on my radar but now I'm kind of like yeah it needs to be done once it's funny when you see things in like broad daylight it's like okay it can really make the difference and that's another thing I have to suggest to you is go see a house on a sunny day that's the best time to do it because you can really see a lot of flaws all around the whole house um so yeah this is the kitchen but if you want to follow along on the house journey, I am posting a lot of stuff on my personal Instagram account, which is at basic.bougie, B-O-U-G-I-E dot Bridget. Um, I spell my name Bridge with a T, as simple as it gets for the spelling of Bridget. So if you want to follow along over there, please do. Um, I did before videos of all the rooms, so I'm going to be doing after videos, which I'm excited to start taking, hopefully very soon. Um, that laminate flooring that's down, that was something that the homeowners had picked. Definitely not my favorite, but um, you know what? I can live with it. I can live with it. I Flooring is one thing. Like if I wanted to change that, I would have to do that before I moved in. And I don't have that much energy or patience to wait to have that flooring changed as well or the money. You know, it's in good shape. It was done pretty recently. So for now... We'll just deal with it and focus on, on the things that can be changed. Um, so all very exciting. If you have any questions about buying a vintage home or anything you want to add, please, you have so many ways to get in touch with me. Please do so. If you have any personal stories you want to share, that would be fun to hear as well. Give us a call, send us an email, reach out on uh, social media. And uh, I think that's about it for now. So happy house hunting if any of you are looking and if you're in a position where like you can't buy a house right now it's okay don't be hard on yourself like if it's for financial reasons or whatever we're all in different seasons of our life financially um and my parents never owned a home my my mom and dad moved into my grandmother's home after she moved out of it because they could not afford a mortgage so my parents never even had a mortgage payment i don't think i don't think they ever could have afforded one so um, it's pretty exciting, you know, being able to do something that my parents couldn't do and, uh, now own two houses, but I don't want to own two houses for very long. I want to own one house and that's it. So yeah, looking forward to moving in and looking forward to, to you sharing in the experience with me. Um, so, you know, in the meantime, stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy, be kind and don't be basic. Bye.